Okay. Uh, good morning. I'm just going to start. Uh, I don't need a projector right now. Just to introduce uh, uh, myself. Um, my name is Sandeep Ghosh. Uh, I work in the Delhi office of Sambodhi. This is my colleague Manmeet Kaur. She also works with me in the Delhi office of Sambodhi. Now, uh, let me let me set the tone of these two days so that we are all very comfortable. Um, let me tell you a little bit about what we do. Right? When uh, Sambodhi asked us to come here and talk to you guys as part of a capacity building exercise, we said that you know we are we are data researchers. We work with data. Right? That's that's what we do. Uh, we go through numbers and create products and so on and so forth. But essentially, we are data professionals. And I said that only call people who work with data. I don't want you to call senior bureaucrats. We are not talking about uh, you know policy and things like that. I want to talk to people who do data handling on a day-to-day -day basis. And they said, fine, create a module where you can actually go and start talking about data, what, what is out there, what, how you can handle data, what can you do with data, what are the different sources of free public data which is available and so on and so forth. So that's where we come from. The two of us work in an entity which is called Development Intelligence Unit. The Development Intelligence Unit is among different other things. We have an MOU with the Ministry of Rural Development with the central government, right? We sit inside the Ministry of Rural Development. Uh, we have access to all the data which is generated by the Ministry of Rural Development. And there is a sister ministry called the Ministry of Panchayati Raj. There are two different ministries, but they have the same minister, uh, Mr. Giriraj, uh, the Honorable Minister, Mr. Giriraj Singh. So we handle tons and tons of data, right? And one of the things which we realized by handling data is that the government generates a huge amount of data, but it doesn't know what to do with the data, right? Uh, hardly any of this data was being used to take decisions. One of the reasons why they were not using it to take decisions is that we realized that only thing that the departments do with the data is create annual reports full of charts, not even graphs, not even maps, just charts. Uh, and, and, and it's a thick report like this, this thick, 1,500 pages, 1,300 pages, and it lies somewhere. So the mandate which was given to us by the government is that why don't you go through as much of the data which we generate and create products, create products, create services and create products in such a way so that, yeah, uh, so that, so that it's something which can be used not only at the central level, but it can be used at the state level. It can be used right down at the, to the district level, you know. Um, the, the structure in most of the country is that at district level you have got a district planning and coordination committee, right, which essentially does most of the district level plans, right. But the district magistrate, the district collector, district magistrates, they are uh, the, the chairperson of uh, that committee. Uh, they are supposed to be using a lot of data to take decisions to decide how they want their district to progress from A to B. Because they don't have data, they just listen to what the elected representatives say. And at the end of the day, the plans are only about creating one road from this house to that house. No real perspective thinking. So the mandate, which was very beautiful, uh, given to us by the ministry is that create products, create products, create services and create dashboards. You know, I mean, a lot of people, uh, one of the things which we realized is that reports, nobody reads anymore. There is no point in creating reports, right? Create dynamic dashboards, teach people how to use dashboards. People can download data. Uh, decide what they want to see and they can see it in a map, they can see it in a graphics, they can they can drill down to as low a level as possible all the way down to the uh, to the village level they can drill down and then create things like indices like for example create if they want to see how is my district doing vis-a-vis -vis all the other district in the country you should be able to see if they want to see which are the sectors it is doing better you should be able to see if you want to see which are the sectors which requires investment it is not doing so well somebody should be able to see, but they should not have to read a 1500 page report. They should be able to do it through a index. So that's what we do for the ministry. And that is where Manmeet and I are coming from. Uh, she will take you through what we want to achieve over the next two days. But uh, uh, at the end of the day, I would be very happy tomorrow, by the end of the day tomorrow, if we can create our own index, if we can, if we can download the data which is available here, create our own sectoral index, create, I'll tell you how we create composite indexes. You can create your own composite index to rank uh, uh, districts or sub-district levels within Meghala itself. 
and actually create a PowerPoint presentation which you can go back to your department and say that look, in two days we have created something which gives you a very clear picture of where we are. That is what we want to do. We want to actually play with the data which is available. I will tell you where you can push, uh, you can, you can bring data, data which is available nationally. All administrative data, I am not talking about private sector data. Nobody, the, the biggest problem with government is that government does not want to trust private data, which is fine, no problem. We will only look at data which we call administrative data, that is, which has been created by the government, right. We will call out data from the government sources, both locally as well as which is available nationally and we are going to create our own sectoral index, we are going to create our own composite index. I will show you how, how, how we usually create composite index and we are going to rank the Meghalaya districts accordingly and create, create. hopefully we can break it up into groups and create uh, some products uh, which we can all be very proud of, right. So I am going to hand it over to my colleague uh, Manmeet right now, she can quickly take you through what we are going to do over the next two days, yes. Alright, so uh, we will start with the data revolution, how has the data revolution taken place worldwide and it reaching the shores of India. We will talk about some of the very popular data sources, uh, both national and district or sub-district level and of course we are going to cover administrative data sources. Uh, then we are going to talk about what are the different types of dashboards and how can one use dashboards for monitoring purposes. I understand that uh, some of the participants here come from uh, Department of Implementation and uh, Monitoring. Both so, evaluation and yes. So, uh, we hope that you will find this really helpful. The next up is going to be data surfing and extraction. We are uh, going to take you through multiple data sources and see how we can drill down to the lowest uh, or you know the most granular level of data available out on the government websites, how to download them, in what all forms can we download them and uh, do our own uh, offline analysis. Uh, then we are going to talk about something really interesting, we call it the Sambodhi panels and uh, that is not, that, that does not come from the administrative data but that is a source of how you can generate your own data sets and uh, use it as directional insights for policy making. Now on day 2 we are going to generate some sectoral reports from Mission Antyodhya. Mission Antyodhya is one of the uh, you know largest and openly available public data sets by the Ministry of Rural Development uh, by the Central Ministry and uh, it lays out data by different ministries, departments or sectors. So you will have data on education, you will have data on uh, public infrastructure, you will have data on health, you will have data on uh, agriculture for that matter, livelihood separately. So we are going to generate some sectoral reports and this is going to be a group exercise. So maybe we can divide into groups and each group can work on to one sector and uh, develop reports. The next uh, part is going to be development of composite index. Like Sandeep mentioned, we will uh, we'll, we'll take you through how we create our indices and we we'll collectively uh, uh, create our own index for Meghalaya in tomorrow. And uh, we will have group presentations by everyone in the second half and go on to data collection and validation, uh, what are the roles and responsibilities of different stakeholders and the ethos of data quantity. We will then have a short concluding session and uh, look forward that this session is as productive uh, for you. Yeah, couple of things that I just want to say. Number one is that please don't treat this as a classroom lecture, right. Uh, I would be very bored talking for a very long time, right. So please, uh, whenever you have any question, I, you don't have to raise your hand, this is not school. Just ask questions, if you want any more clarification, just ask clarifications, if you are going fast ask us to stop and go slowly, repeat it again, it does not matter, but it has to be interactive because if it is not interactive then the whole exercise is going to become very boring, yes. So please feel free, do not be shy, please understand one thing, we are data guys and hopefully majority of the people who I saw uh, uh, who had written down in the uh, registration desk uh, outside, most of you people are, are, are data people yourself, so we are we're just like you. It is just that you are here and we work there in Delhi, but otherwise 
the problems that you face are the problems we face every day right so the solutions we are simply here to talk to you about the type of solutions which we have designed which is doing pretty well which is creating a lot of buzz in delhi which we hope after we leave you can actually try and create some things like that on your own and and and, and create a buzz here as well right any any questions till now wonderful so uh, this is what we start off with um, I, we start off the reason why we start off with this is because we think okay let me give you a little bit of a background here i i i come from the commercial industry right i have worked in uh, the nielsen company taylor nielsen softrace ipsos um, uh, carvi uh, uh, i mean all 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 the big uh, 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 agencies uh, including cantar who does commercial research right i have been working in the social sector for 30 years of my life yes 30 years of my life i have been part of this data industry uh, doing uh, uh, um, doing um, m and &E, doing other other formative research qualitative research quantitative research and everything but what i realize right now is that the amount that the data environment in india has changed so much in the last 10 years that it's something that someone has to take note of because when i started this industry even if data was available data was not cannot could not be accessed government data accessing government data required a huge amount of letters to be written to this department that department this permission that permission and so on and so forth and that too you were never given access to unit level data you were given access to district level data or state level data today things have changed not only has government opened up in making data available to you government has opened up in making data available to everybody anybody who wants there is so much of data and there is a lot of international companies which are coming in here with their own products and with their own databases which is in getting integrated into the system uh, within india and i want to talk, take a little bit of time uh, for you to appreciate how the data environment in india is changing right so if you, and i am sure you will agree with me that 90% of all data in existence today has been produced in the last 10 years the amount of data that is being produced right now has never been produced before in the past there are more house there are a lot of reasons but most importantly there are more households which own a mobile phone right now than anywhere else and that they have access access to electricity access access to clean water but even perhaps even more is access to mobile and access to their presence in the social network right and this explosion of information or data revolution is ground breaking implications on the development sector today the development sector cannot go and say i don't know because they are supposed to know they are supposed to know where the data is out there because the data is out there i will show you the type of data sources that can be accessed for free right and you'll be very surprised at the type of data which is available out there i'm going to give you a feeling of the next with increasing digital penetration in india there has been an explosion of information which is fact india i mean uh, let me give you a very small bit of statistics in 2025 and you'll be very surprised to know in 2025 just two years from now there will be more people with a in sheer numbers in numbers there will be more people with an internet connection in rural india than urban india can you beat it by sheer numbers there will be more people having an internet connection in rural india than it will be in urban India. And this is the type of rapid change which is happening right now in India, right? And implications of data science in India, there is administrative data, administrative data, government is collecting a huge amount of data. Government earlier used to do only census. Government earlier used to do NFHS every four years. Government used to do uh, the Ministry of uh, 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 Statistics and Planning Imp Implementation, MOSPI used to do their nss uh, surveys every, every round every thin round thick round but that's it but now every ministry practically runs their own uh, 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 surveys and huge sur you know she talked about something called a mission antudaya how many people have heard of mission antudaya has anybody heard of mission antudaya it's fine one let me tell you what mission antudaya do you know mission antudaya is going on right now in mehala let me tell you what mission antudaya is Mission Antadha is the largest survey ever undertaken in the world. Why? Mission Antadha is a rural survey. It covers 6.63 lakh villages. 
can you imagine 6.63 lakhs villages 216 data points 216 data points it covers 2.5 uh, it it it, it uh, 6.6 lakh uh, villages it comes uh, uh, 2.53 lakh uh, gram panchayats your equivalent to a gram panchayat is the uh, is the uh, dorbars right yes yes dorbar dorbars yes so it covers all of that every village is covered every and and so much of data is being collected and this is the fourth or fifth year right now all of this data, I'll show you, all of this data can be accessed by you, 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 everything, all the way down to the village level. It has been made free access to everybody and government takes decisions on rural development based on that. It collects information on infrastructure, it collects information on service delivery at the village level. So, you will have information on number of village, village uh, number of villagers who have got, <coughs> who have got, uh, uh, um, houses under Prime Minister's uh, 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 Prime Minister's Awas Yojana, that uh, that rural housing scheme. You will have information about distance of the pub, fair price shop. You will have distance about distance to the nearest uh, bus stop. You will have information on nearest uh, distance to the nearest ATM. You have all infrastructure information, all uh, this information. Just imagine 216 data points for every village in the country. <coughs> and that data is out there. Last we will work on last year's data because this year the work is going on right now. <coughs> okay. And of course, technology. One is administrative data, and another one is technology. You know, <coughs> by technology data we mean data which is being accessed um, through Aadhaar. <coughs> data being accessed through um, ATM card payments. Data being accessed through <coughs> sorry, can I get some water? During COVID time, during the Aragya Setu app, the Aragya Setu app, all of us had to download in our mobiles and, and so on and so forth. So these are and social media is being actually accessed through drones and so on and so forth. So, forth. so, whether it is technology enabled data or whether it is administrative data being generated by individual ministries, there is just a huge amount of data which is out there and we need professionals to make sense of it, right. <coughs> Look at some of the people who have just come to India. These are all global leaders in data. They have all now set up shop in India. Right, data.org with found <coughs> money from the Google Foundation <coughs> and the Mastercard Foundation has put a huge. I mean, ten million dollars is no joke in 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 build, building the data field here in India. You've got Google AI which has come in. You've got Data Find which has come in. You've got Meta. Meta, you know, Meta is now called. Uh, I mean, Facebook is now called uh, Meta, right? Meta has a huge amount of products which they have. Uh, uh, they have used th th their model is very simple. They do collaborative work with the country's uh, companies or NGOs. We are, for example, uh, somebody is also a partner to Meta. We collaborate with Data, and they help us create products. And this product is made available to the country free of charge, right? Like for example, and we'll probably come to that uh, uh, later. They through uh, social media traffic, uh, they. Uh, they look at migration pattern through social media traffic. They looked at uh, 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 COVID vaccine coverage. All of these things they did uh, through the Google Nightlights uh, 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 analysis. They looked at development uh, 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 over space. Very very interesting products. Uh, there are some 20 30 different products which they have come in with India, and they are refining it every year based on data which is being available to them by Indian companies. Wadmani AI is a very old company. A lot of you people might not have heard about it, but Wadmani AI does a lot of work for the development sector, uh, uh, especially the poverty sector. They do a lot of work. They were working internationally. See, most of the work here on, on the development sector first is tried out in Africa, right? First they try out the models in Africa, and then actually it comes to India. So that's also why it happened. They did a lot of work in Africa, and then they're coming here and all that. UN Global Pulse is here, 
right now with the, all their data sets. So harnessing, so so that's what we want to do. We want to harness public intent data or public intent data. What is another word called administrative data, right? So traditionally, the government has been, as I said, traditionally the government has been uh, producing uh, government data, right? I mean, government producing government data in the sense in censors, NFHs, UDIs, HMIs, and so on and so forth data. And public administrative data in India typically collected for monitoring and regulatory purposes was vastly un untapped resource. This is, let's say, 10, 12 years ago, 15 years ago, vastly untapped. It, data was being collected and that's it. But, but, there were problems. And let us recognize this as a problem. Those of you who have worked long enough will know that this is a very typical problem which data scientists face overall. First is, nobody talks to each other. Right? Nobody. There are 58 ministries in Delhi. Nobody talks to each other. So if they don't talk to each other, how will their database talk to each other? Simple. Let me give you a very, very simple example. You've got the health ministry which the, collects so much of data. You've got the edition, uh, agriculture ministry, uh, the education ministry which collects so much of data. You want to merge the two databases to understand what is the health and education situation in a particular area. Now, if you merge, people who work in data will tell you, if you merge data sets, there has to be at least one variable which is common. There has to be one variable which is common, right? What one of the basic things which we try and tell everybody is that there is something called an LGD, which is a local government directory. You know, census has their unique code. Census has unique codes even for the village, for the cities, for everything. LGD has been developed by the Ministry of Panchayati Raj for every habitation there is a unique LGD code, right? And all ministries has been asked that for all rural data, you please adopt the LGD code. They are not doing it. And without this common, uh, co common code, the data cannot be merged. So for somebody like me who wants to create some uh, uh, see, because development is not unidirectional, right? Development cannot be only agriculture. Development cannot be only education. Development cannot be only health. Development has to be a lot of things together, right? And for a lot of things to come together, there has to be a scope for you to merge databases. That is not happening because nobody is following a single instruction. That used to be the basic problem, right? Public data sets were all siloed across ministries. Everybody was very happy that I have my own data. And that's it. Lack of standardization and consistency. Lack of standardization and consistency. Let me give you an example. Health data. Health data was available at the village level. School data was available only at the block level. School data, schools was never uh, sort of plotted against a district. The school has to be there uh, against a village. The school has to be there in some village or the other. They never plotted. Right. So this was the problem. There was inconsistency, therefore that could not be matched. Weak infrastructure and culture to share data. Ten years ago, nobody was sharing their data. Nobody was doing anything. And there was resistance to using public data for decisions and drawing conclusions by outside of government. Even NGOs and all that used to say government collects bakwal data. Government data cannot be trusted. So people from outside never used to trust government data. Government didn't used to trust outside data. So we had a series of ministries all sitting on their own data sets without talking to each other and it was absolutely worthless. But things have changed and things have changed very rapidly. Look at these things. There are huge partnerships which have come in right now with private and partnerships with private players. With private players expertise where the government is coming and selecting and, and, and creating so many things. Do you know what? How, how many of you people have used NDAP? Have any of you people used NDAP? Okay. NDAP has the potential to become the mother of all databases, mother of all sites. At least in India. At least in India, it is going to be the mother of all websites. You know why? Because this is something which has been run by NITIO and it is and it is putting together all government databases, all of it together. You just have to search, use some you, uh, keywords. Key keywords and search and it will tell you what the database is. It is also creating unique codes so, that codes so that different databases can be merged together. 
it's a huge project which they have undertaken but they have already done a lot of it i will give you we will take you through end app we will give you a live demo of end app so that you can see how easy it has become to go and access this data look at the national this is mospies this is mospies uh, the, the national program for improving quality of statistics this is done by the national uh, by the ministry of statistics and program implementation where there are look at uh, with world bank money they are uh, they are uh, improving the quality efficiency there by the way they are changing the parameters of nss there has been a huge criticism of national sample survey something which we all grew up with this project is actually changing the parameters of nss because there is a lot of criticism in the sampling of nss so that's all changing <laughs> data.org is training 1 million data professionals by 2032 that's a huge project which they are doing right now development data lab is doing work directly with the government you know data.gov.in that's another website run by the government where you get sometimes useless but sometimes useful data but huge amount of administrative data you just have to key in what you want and if it is there it will give you that data and it, you can download it for free i'll also take you through data.gov.in we will do it live here so that you can see what sort of data is available and then big data because of all of this big data is saving you we already talked about mission unto that right you've got something like an amplify beta which is urban amplify data is being done by the ministry of housing and urban affairs which is the housing ministry it used to be called mo udu ud ministry of urban development where there are 4300 towns and cities in india 4300 plus now any data available across the whether it is municipal data financial data um, data from such survection anything uh, 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 anything all of it is going to be there in one place you just have to type the name of the city and it will have you have linked data for all databases for that city that's what the master with the city you guys lot of you people already are using you guys you guys can even in the size it covers more than 1.5 million schools in india more than 9.6 million teachers and more than 264 million children this data is free it is available for free and you can access it sitting right over here you don't have to write to anyone what else is happening this is something very exciting which is happening right now and we are very excited with it government of india has realized at least more recently that they have realized that if you can if you can have some sort of competition then people will compete against each other and it, they will improve the services given to the citizen right he said more why can't we create a situation where a village is competing with another village a district is competing with another district or city is competing with another city for ranking everybody wants to be first second third if you can do that have you i have seen posters while coming here such survection you've seen the posters of such such survection right that is the the cleanliness survey that that happens in december january uh, every year shillong shillong uh, 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 participates in it all the other cities uh, here participated in it right 4300 cities participate every city every different sizes of cities they they i mean at the end of the day there is a huge event in delhi where prizes are given and so on and so forth but not only that if you rank you get a lot of money to do additional uh, work development work on on sanitation and and hygiene such survection was the first time when they started this competition every city competing with every city and what happens this entire thing is based on data quality there are some 200 300 different parameters where you have to submit documents so automatically your data archiving becomes better right today if you go if you go to the municipal office here if you go to the shillong municipal office you will see you talk to the people if you talk to anybody there they will tell you how the data environment has changed in the municipal office just because of this one project they are far more organized right now because the entire competition is about submitting data right then you've got another set of competition called the same thing which happens in urban happens in rural every district is competing with other district for ranking for ministry of jal thal shakti ease of living the smart city shillong is also a smart city the smart city there are also prizes the ease of living index ranks smart cities 
different sizes of smart cities. That is also uh, 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 that is also the recent uh, one is still going on right now, but last year uh, is already out. Then Niti Aayog has the National Multi-Dimensional Poverty Index, which is again every district uh, competing with every other district. This is all all of these things. If you can, this is just a few examples. Uh, if we want to say is that the government is now perpetuating competition within departments, within villages, within districts, within blocks, within states, within uh, 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 ministries and departments, and all of this is actually helping the data environment here in this country. Everybody is forced to keep good data and data just because of the requirement for these surveys or for these competitions, the data availability now is in much better form than it was earlier. Apart from that, there are several ministries which is now invested a lot on very good looking dashboards. If you just go, the ministry which we are engaged in, if you just go and let's say go to the mission onto their dashboard. Look at this. It gives you it gives you three types of data. It gives you three types of data. It gives you summary statistics. That is, in agriculture, it will tell you, or education, it will tell you big big data. You can go there and select. You can, as you can see, you can select different. Uh, 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 you you can select uh, a state. You can select block. You can select district and get a minute data. You can all go all the way down to the village level. So it gives you summary statistics. You drill into that. It is going to give you one data level. You will all do this for Meghalaya. Don't worry. This is all going to be live. We'll do this for Meghalaya. You you uh, uh, you you get one extra level data. Let's say up to district level data. You go one level down, and all of this is downloaded. All of this is downloaded. You can download this and access this data, and 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 and, and do and play with it. up to you. So, this is the background which I just wanted to say. Number one is recognize the fact that in the last 10 years we have come a very long way with the data. Recognize the fact that the problems which we used to have 10 years ago about nobody sharing data or doing anything has changed. People are sharing a lot of data right now. Because of competition, the quality of data has gone up. Because of foreign players coming in and helping individual departments and ministries to streamline their data, there is a lot better quality of data archiving which is taking place right now. And every state, every ministry, within a ministry, let's say rural development, you do, I'm not even talking about mission until there, just go and see Manrega, the Manrega data, the uh, uh, National the, Rural, the, employment, rural employment, employment Program data. It has, it has data right down to the individual job card holder. And it is so dynamic that it changes every day. Every day they change the data, right? So that's the level of granularity that it is available. But the biggest thing which happens right now is that this granularity is not just there in the website. They have they are allowing you access so that you can download it in any format you want to play with the data. So it is not only just academics trying to do a PhD. It is people like you and me who have been mandated to use data to create products and to to answer questions. Uh, we have access to administrative data. In fact, the amount of change that we have seen in uh, in administrative data has probably not taken place even in the private sector. The, the, uh, the level of uh, uh, dynamic uh, changes that we see in administrative data. So what uh, what Manmeet will go right now is that she's going to actually show you a live demo of some of the websites we just talked about. And you will see yourself how data is getting downloaded. Before that, I just wanted to ask you, have any of you bought your laptops? Do you um, have one? anybody else? Can we have laptop? a show of hands? One, two, three. Uh, that side, four. Okay. If you have your laptop, open up your laptop and, uh, 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 you know, get, uh, we'll give you the password, right? While she is demoing it here, you can actually do it yourself. Yes. It will be very nice, uh, you know, if you can actually do it yourself and that will look, uh, share it with uh, the people around you. Okay. So, 
Ah, so uh, uh, even in Mission Antar there, the, uh, the, it will stop only up to the uh, or ACCC Mission Antar there, they, it will never go up to the individual household level data. They will not give you access. That Manrega, they don't have Manrega data. Manrega data also has uh, job card numbers. It will not give you a name. Okay, so uh, we are told that the tea is ready. Maybe we can break and then resume with Sure, you can want to take a break for tea and then we can come back. Then we tell them the password. Yes, the Wi Fi password is uh, MIIT at the rate MIIT. Maybe all we small. can write this. Yes, all small. At MIIT. MIIT at the rate MIIT. You can do, I, I suppose you can also use your phones for it. It's not. Good. But please join us for tea and then we'll come back. Uh, uh, there is a lot of, uh, in this presentation also, a uh, lot of the websites which gives you free access to administrative data is embedded, uh, uh, it's embedded within the presentation itself. I mean, it's, uh, you can, uh, URL, you click on it and it will take you to the URL. So, you don't have to take a lot of notes. Uh, we, you'll, we'll leave this with you and you can just uh, take it. Well, I'm assuming all of you handle data at some point or the other, but for people who have to develop data sets or databases or draw some conclusions on rural, I mean, uh, uh, rural by rural meaning the state primarily is rural. There is little urban in the state, there is more rural. For them, this is going to be the most definitive uh, database. This. Apart from the fact that there is also the ministry's own data, uh, um, own the Ministry of Rural Development has nine uh, programs or schemes. Uh, each one of them have their own uh, dashboards. But this is a very useful one. The questionnaire and everything is there. The data set is there. She's going to take you through them. Uh, but I have a feeling for your work, you should be able to use this quite often. Come. All right. Um, both of you, please uh, enter this URL and open this website, Mission Antodaya 2020. Like Sandeep mentioned in the beginning that it's one of the most exhaustive data sources available for rural uh, geographies. It has somewhere around 6.67 6, la uh, lakh villages, covers all of them. And uh, as you go around, it gives you a brief about what it is, how the survey is conducted, how the enumerators are trained, how is the data cleaned and analyzed and so on and so forth. And bases the same data, how are different uh, indices generated. There could be in an index for infrastructure, there could be an index for services or there could be a composite index as well. Now let's dive deep into the data download part. We'll have to bear with the slow data connection. Okay. Now, I'll first take you through uh, the analytics. We'll go to the data download part later. Okay. When you click on data analytics, this is what you get. Survey at a glance. It basically gives you data set by different ministries or departments or sectors. You can choose the same from the left hand side panel. Uh, Wait, let this page load. Yeah, you see this you left. Can click on the, you can click on top of the pictures, or you can go to the left and say it has, like for example, agriculture. Agriculture. 
uh, agriculture will have uh, maybe 15 uh, in indicators. You have to go inside agriculture to find out the values of these indicators. Otherwise, it gives you some summary statistics. So, so otherwise, the survey at a glance gives you an all India picture. So, that means that 99% of the GPs were completed, 98.6 of them were verified, 97% of the villages were completed and 96.8% of the villages were verified with that data. Now, when you look at the uh, yeah. summary statistics, so for example, when you look at something like an animal husbandry, it gives you 11% of the uh, places had veterinary hospitals, 25% of them had access to livestock extension services. Similarly, as this you is, go this is at a this is at a gram panchayat level, which is yeah. equivalent to your Dorbar uh, level, right? So the data that you would have submitted for the survey here uh, is for the Dorbar show. Similarly, eleven percent of the houses in that particular GP were doing or were no, engaged. Eleven percent of the GPs. Eleven percent of the GPs were had uh, piscicultural. Uh, activities and 6% of them had access to extension facilities for aquaculture. So, this is just a very basic very fish, top level. Fisheries findings. might have more indicators, but you will have to go there. So, for example, if you go Don't to go fisheries, to fisheries. Okay. yeah. Okay. So, these were the top 3 indicators or the parameters for which the data was collected. Go to agriculture because agriculture is very important for. Yeah. So, so supposedly the number of uh, households engaged in non-farm activities. So these are the indicators facilities. that are covered. Uh, these are the indicators that are covered um, under Mission Unto There in agriculture, right? You've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eleven indicators, right? It gives you the all. Go, go on, go on. It give, it uh, how many how many of the gram panchayats had watershed development projects? How many had majorly non-farm activities instead of farm activities? Government uh, seed centers. How many of them had government seed centers? How many of them had community rainwater harvesting structures? Right. It has all of these figures. But this is summary. This is an all India at an all India level. All India level. Seventeen percent of the uh, gram panchayats had uh, 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 access to a government seed center. This is all India. Now you start doing drilling down for more data. So let us select Meghalaya here. Now you see all these figures have changed. These are all for Meghalaya now. Similarly, if you have a particular district of choice, suppose let's go to Reboi. You see these figures have changed again for Reboi. Now if you have a particular sub-district, a block of interest, we can select that. Otherwise, we can continue doing our analytics for Reboi district. And it will go down to the... Yeah. And this so is how... So it for all the blocks in Reboi. Yeah. And as you go down, you will see different charts for different parameters that we collected data for. Let's let's visit another district. Let's go to West Carolines. In Reboi, there were 19% household, 19% GPs that were engaged in non-farm activities. In West Garo Hills, 11% are engaged in non-farm activities. Right? Similarly, if you see for now, these were all general uh, GPs considered. So, you have a filter here. You can select the rural panchayats or aspirational districts. If there are any aspirational districts in Meghalaya, you can put the filter accordingly and select that. I have deliberately put general here. Let's go to. Okay. Let's select. Is there is anybody from West Garo? Anyone here from West Garo? You? Which is your block? Okay, let's see. The first one. Bagging gate. You know, this data is collected uh, at the lowest level by the CRPs, which is the Community Resource Persons under NRLM or SRLM. They are trained to collect that data and it is verified by the panchayat. Uh, 
But essentially, what you can see is that you can, you can you can see that this is that their block data. Yeah. So all there was hundred percent farmer coverage in terms of uh, Pradhan Mantri. KPY is. Uh, PM KPY is uh, Pen Kisan Pension Yojana. Nah, Kisan Pension, Kisan Pension Yojana. Yojana. Similarly, under PM Fasal Bima Yojana, Crop Insurance Scheme, like there was 100% of the farmers coverage. are currently under Fasal Bima Yojana. So, so what it essentially says is that Prime Minister's Fasal uh, uh, Bima Yojana, less than 25% of the farmers were covered. That means service delivery was poor. So, it, it is essentially telling you that all the villages, uh, all the gram panchayats fall within that category. That means 100% of the villages in these gram panchayats, so that means had a coverage of less than 25% for that particular farms. scheme. Now, you can actually you now go to the dashboard and download the data. You can go to download data, download data, and design. What, what else do you want to show? Okay, we can. You can move to the next data source. Show data me. download. Show okay, very interesting. All right. <coughs> Let's go to data download. You can download the data. Ah, so when you go to data download, you'll get something like this. You can select Meghalaya here. You can select the district of your choice or you or can you simply select districts. all districts. Now here to the left you you will get an option for the data format in which format you want to download, download your data. Do you want to download a CSV file or a JSON file or an Excel file? Now in most of the government departments people are more comfortable using an Excel format. So let us stick to the Excel format for the time being. Now, five uh, information you see that there have been 12 downloads for Meghalaya so far. The last, the uh, last downloaded data was on the 10th of July. I think that was me. <laughs> and the date that it was published was on the 2nd of May 22, last year. Now, user information and you can enter your credentials here. And you can enter the email. Now what happens is the earlier you could download the data from the website itself before uh, without entering your credentials but now they have made it more systematic. They will send you a link to download the zip file of the entire data set on your registered email id. So whatever id you will mention here make sure that is correct so that you can you can receive the download link. Now instead of wait because the downloading will take time. Just go to that. Uh, no, they will just get a link on their email. It will be easier for them to access okay. it later. We will use it for government non-commercial use and get download link on the email. If you click on download supportive document, you will basically get access to you know the questionnaire, how to read the data that you get. You will get uh, probably some of the, uh, how to do the gap analysis, how to read through the composite index, so you, what and so on and so forth. The question file has been sent to your email ID. Have you all followed so far? Now, since the file is heavy, it sometimes it takes a couple of minutes to get into your inbox. We will visit it later, but I think you will get a notification as well the moment you receive it. So let's go to the next data source. No, no, no. Show them what it looks like. Oh. Yeah. Oh, oh. So this is how it will eventually come. You will get an email like this. Dear so and so name of the user, kindly download the link by clicking on the link below. You will get a download link. The moment you click here, you will get a zip file. When you open the zip file, you have this Excel. In this particular case, I downloaded the data for Madhya Pradesh. So it reads the state code, whatever is the code, LGD code of that state, reads the name of the state, reads out the district LGD codes, the names of the districts and their sub-district codes and names as well. So for example, here when we, when we had selected Meghalaya, you will find Meghalaya written everywhere in this particular column. 
and we had selected all districts remember we did not select a particular district of choice so you will have all the districts all their sub districts or blocks the gp or village equivalent and their parliamentary constituency code as well as their assembly constituency code because the ma questionnaire has a field for these two as well and then as you scroll towards your right you will start having See, suppose in parliament <coughs> suppose in meghalaya parliament uh, some mp wants to know what is happening in their constituency now for that person is not interested in district level data because their constituency will cover part of this district part of that district part of this district right so if you give them three district data it does not help you want to give them data only for that parliamentary constituency so every gram panchayat is marked is mapped against a parliamentary constituency if an mla wants it you can give them only that the, the data of assembly constituency also so it has two use it has use for mps and mlas also it has use for administration uh, also it gives you district block and sub block level data so this is how it looks like so when i downloaded the data last time everything for meghalaya starting from their parliamentary and uh, assembly constituency so on and so forth till the last so on the top row the, the parameters are right? mentioned yes this is all agriculture and as you scroll to your right you will have different parameters now all these 1 2 3 4 5 are basically the response codes from the ma questionnaire i will show you the questionnaire as well before going there you see up, they have also collected the village geospatial data in order to check for the noise right what do we mean by noise noise means any useless information that might or have been or wrong information that might have entered the system by chance or by the virtue of human error they might be claiming that my village is a hospital so if you have the geo uh, geotag data then you will know whether there is a hospital there or not and you can clean the data yourself i will show you the questionnaire as well so this was the part a and c that's how it starts from parliamentary constituency assembly constituency and it starts with basic parameters mm -hmm. on collecting population for male female total number of households we gradually go on to uh, other pillar wise parameters hmm. so when you when we talk about agriculture we have different parameters number of households engaged in farm activities non farm activities remember we talked about 1% in the block that you mentioned and there was 11% in riboi or 19% in riboi these are the same ones availability to government access seat centers and so on and so forth so this is very interesting uh, you might get a code of 4 or 3 or something this is does the village have a uh, say say suppose uh, what what uh, this 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 one yeah so availability of government seat center yes or no right then if it is yes it's fine if it is no then it is asking distance okay so most of the infrastructure questions in mission anta there not only tells you whether that infrastructure is available in the village or not it also tells you if it is not available in the village then what is the distance right so it will give you distance data within 1 km or 1 to 2 km 2 to 5 km 5 to 10 km or more than 10 km now right? see in the data when you go to this particular parameter is government seat center available all of them if not most have two that means, means that it is not available yeah because two was the code for no and if they said no we asked them but what was the distance to the nearest government seat center so for if it is less than 1 km we are giving them one if it was between 1 to 2 km we were giving so them two the code. right so here when they said that they did not have it in the village some of them coded four some of them most of them coded so five so five means what five means beyond 10 km beyond More 10 km it's a five okay so you obviously when you are analyzing this data not only are you downloading the data you have to download the questionnaire also to make okay. sense of these 1 2 3 4 5 most of the places you will also find numbers other than 1 2 3 4 5 because those are the exact fields so for example if i want to know so let me tell you one the of the things which we will do tomorrow and and you you'll so we'll go a little bit more in detail of this later is that tomorrow in the first half we're going to break into teams right and we're going to choose a sector 
each team will choose a sector somebody could choose health somebody could choose education i want definitely one team to choose agriculture because agriculture is very important uh, uh, for a state like this right for most indian states agriculture we are going to prepare let's say a, a status report of agriculture in meghalaya where it is doing well where it is not doing well what is the infra agriculture infrastructure how important is it which are the districts which are good in these aspects which are the districts which are not good in these aspects what is the ranking of the districts we will create all of that we are going to create let's say 10 15 uh, slide presentation on the status of agriculture similarly we will prepare a presentation on the status of health and a status we are going to heavily use this data we are going to only use this data and some data we are going to download from the agriculture department here right provided the data is available district wise at least we are going to make a district level analysis of the status of agriculture so you you see how we are going to do this right we are going to download the agriculture information and then we are going to analyze that information and create a powerpoint presentation okay let's visit our next data source which is ndap by niti aayog so you can simply type ndap niti aayog and the url is any any NDAP question so far have you guys understood how Uh, mission antudha is being used and imagine this is a huge database which is just sitting there you don't need any permission no letter no nothing it's all there okay for all your purposes if you're making a status paper if you write ask uh, if you're answering a parliamentary question whatever on agriculture on health on a which is of course it doesn't have urban information only rural rural information this is enough and you can also do a comparative between different years in ma and they can't challenge it yeah because, because it's, it's government's data. data and it's been validated government has given this data to government okay now this is what we talked about as the mother of all databases that is what we uh, uh, niti aayog is trying to do so take a look so they launched this national data and analytics platform back in 22 early 22 in fact and it's an amalgamation or uh, you know you can call it a collation of all the nationally available data sets of course the granularity might differ from data set to data set and uh, you can do whole lot of things here you can simply go and view the data you can download it for your own analysis you can visualize the data sets you can merge them do whole lot of stuff here you simply have to search for the Uh, data here you can type your keywords you know by merging data i just wanted to tell you by merging data sets it is very important suppose there is a particular data set which is available by block level or by district level and you have got another set which is available by district level also you could, there is a feature here which will help you merge at least there is one column which is common right district here and district there you can actually merge the two it's one of the most beautiful features that they have um, done you can take 20 different data sets and you can merge it together as long as there is one common indicator across all of them right it allows you to merge data so you can create a master data set which can be used for composite index development so take a look okay. take a look this is going to be of great help to all of you yeah Well, the RIN departments have to provide the data, so they can't become redundant, huh? No. So this sources the data from those from RIN different departments. Ways. You know, there is a website called IndiaStat.com. It sources data. It is an aggregator, just like uh, you know, uh, just like Bookings.com. It is an aggregator, right? For all hotels and accommodations and all that. This is an aggregator. So if you don't want to, the best part about this web is that if you don't know where to get this data, you just go to one site. and type in a requirement if it is there aggregated it will automatically tell you so it saves a lot of time for a lot of people for people like you and me we might know where the main source is but for some somebody sitting in the us a researcher somebody sitting in harvard or something like that wants to for them this is perfect okay and before we jump into finding typing the keywords and finding the data set that we need there is also a convenience feature here that you can again search your data set by sectors and another thing i wanted to just say is i'm happy that you have asked this data 
most of the line departments right capture data which is scheme specific or program specific like for example uh, most of the data which is available with uh, uh, ministries of rural development is based on the nine schemes which ministry of rural development has right uh, uh, pmay pmgsy nsap uh, manrega there's that uh, and so on and so forth right the mission antodaya is a separate unit altogether right so a lot of people who are visiting the uh, ministry of rural development website will not get mission antodaya data it's a different uh, 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 website altogether they go to the ministry's website they will know they will not get it here you will get everything together so you can actually it will it will it saves you a lot of time in searching this is still a work in progress it is not ready yet because this is massive right still work in progress but already a lot of work has already you just see a couple of examples Error data. Just see see an example and you will know. Just uh, show you some data. So you can search data sets by sectors or uh, by ministries. So, so this was see they have identified these as the major sectors. Okay. So all data you can see: agriculture, fisheries, animal husbandry, communications, consumer affairs, culture and tourism, education, finance, power, internal, external affairs, industry. hrd housing health and so on and so forth right these are the major sectors suppose you choose a i don't know choose what health let's go to health so these are the different data sources available by health we have ayush we have national nutrition survey we have data sets on early childhood care and education we have hmis as well so it has headings and subheadings and sub subheadings nfhs of course we also have population projections which were available under the census because they again fall under the health segment so this is very different sometimes we like for example i want to make a uh, i want to say that uh, you know rural india is very important because rural india by sheer size is very large i i want to know uh, I, i suppose i go to the website and say that okay tell me what the population of the projected population of 2021 the size of europe google will tell me what about the size of australia google will tell me now i add it up and i want to see whether 2021 22 projected population of rural india is bigger than this or not i'm stumped i don't know which site i don't know census name i don't know does it have a 2021 projected population or not so here you can just simply type in the keywords all you have to do 2021 rural projection india if it is there in the website it will give you the entire data right at times the host website is not working or the server is down but since this is an aggregator endap is an aggregator website it already has that data at its back end so whenever the host website is not working you can again go there and download the data from there. and while you can go you can roll scroll down and look at all of these data which is available suppose you get bored doing this right manmeet there is an option of just going to keyword searches of right? course of course suppose you don't have time to go through this you already know what you want you know what you want right just simply type no let me see if there's anything available by drugs okay there's a drug survey report there's test analysis data of drug samples by different sources also and by different dosage forms also suppose oral dosage or vaccine or what okay so you see most of data sets come up whatever whatever data whatever keyword i have typed all the data sets that have those keywords in the, in their titles will pop up and i can select the one and it cannot be only choice. one word you can write write three four words right I, 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 you can okay so it did not give me anything by this if i reduce the words again there's nothing here so drug will be generated you don't have a lot of them on hospital of course hospital is a very common keyword i can also set some of the filters here for example if i want to restrict my uh, search period to the recent years or if i want all the results so i can do that here any or custom i can set the frequency what kind of data do i am i looking at am i looking at annual data sets am i looking at monthly data sets am i looking at bin uh, data sets why don't you type one thing which is a very big topic right tuberculosis 
you need to be careful of the spellings. So, cases, cases. Second one. Because there is a huge program on tuberculosis, mm -hmm. right? So, let us restrict us ourselves to yearly data. So, there was nothing in the last year that happened. Maybe monthly. Mm -hmm. Any. Okay. Granularity. Now, if you want to look at state district block, I do not think any, yeah, nothing is available. But I am sure it will be available by district. It should be, yes. We have a lot of data sets that are available at the district level and give out details on TB cases. Of course, health is already selected. Yeah. Now, if you are new to the uh, this entire data catalog or the platform, what you can do is when you are at the home page, you have a list of tutorials. How did NDAP do the aggregation? How did it standardize? How you can navigate through the website? How you can go through different data sources? How you can merge the data sets? How you can use them for visualization? How to look at metadata? So on and so forth. So you see, there is one year NDAP overview and end to end demo. And it is available in two languages, English and Hindi. Data visualization, merge function, standardization. It's all very simple. It all makes the it important simple. features of the website, you will have a tutorial on it. You can look at the tutorial. Right. Now, let's, uh, those of us who have our laptops, I am not sure how good this feature or how the user experience is in your mobile phones, but on the laptops, we can do this. Let us sign up. Because if you do not sign up, it will keep on, you know, throwing up that message, please log in to download the data set, please log in to download the data set. So, let us sign up for once. Okay, verification link will be sent to your email, you have to verify that. Okay, meanwhile, let us go and look for some indicators. Okay, give me any one random keyword that you would like to search data for, anything. Single parent, let us see if there is anything. I doubt though, but let us see. Sorry, anything else? Mental health. There is something available by mental illness. Mental illness again. Public expenditure on health by components across state. I doubt if this will have expenditure for mental health. So this it the gives health, you persons. The yeah, it, it it has it has uh, caught this word mental. Mental is the keyword that it has caught, and it's giving all the results that contain the word mental. Well, I think on a uh, Lighter side, we are not paying sufficient attention to mental health. Okay, let us go to sub district standard report. So the page is not. Sorry, my friend, not a good day for mental health. Okay, let us let us look at something easy. Let us go to, uh, let us look for education. School education. Yeah. Let us see what is available in education. Education will have hundreds of things. Mm -hmm. Level wise enrollment in school and higher education. Let us go to this. Okay. So, you see it will give you a brief overview about the data set to the left. You can go to the data table to see a preview of the data. You can go for the visualizations as, as well. For now, let us focus on the general information. You will see the source of the data set here. So, this particular data set on level wise enrollment in school and higher education comes from the Ministry of Education. Uh, it was 
okay it's a country level coverage the year range of this particular data set is from 2010 to 15 and it was last uploaded on april 26 in this year now let's see what all is available it has now see it gives you the data preview here you can either go to the data table or you can scroll down and just see the data preview so this is easier because at times it so happens that you know we keep on downloading so many different data sets and that's when uh, we you know we realize oh this is useless oh this is useless as well and i we end up did not getting the uh, we end up do not getting the data of our choice so the preview here is really helpful you see the year is mentioned here the education level whether it was elementary or higher education or school or a certificate or a diploma level uh, it's there for different genders and you see the indicators here there are three indicators level wise number of enrollments by all categories uh, by sc by st so they have done a uh, class categorization social class categorization here if you scroll down further you will have access to the metadata metadata basically tells you the uh, you know all about the parameters that have the data available on so for example what is the granularity what are the years how many number of years uh, is the data available so upar humne yahan pe padha tha that you know it's available for 2010 to 2015 so that means 5 years so does it give you the same no it gives you three unique values that means from the year 2010 to 2015 Although the data label is for these 5 years, but the data within the data set is available for 3 years, right? Now education level, it gives you 16 unique values. That means 16 levels of education have been considered in this data set. And 2 genders have been considered, boys and girls. Now this is the metadata for the indicators. It of course lists down the indicators that have been considered in the data set. It gives you the top level statistics so for example what is the min max what is the average what is the median value what is the unit of that indicator is it a number is it a percentage is it a ratio so on and so forth yes now let's go and download this data set you can simply click on export data set you will have to log in first but since we did not verify uh, the link so we cannot log in but once you click on export data set it will ask you to log in and then you can download the data set. Uh, yeah, I do. I will show it to them. I will show it to them. I'll, I also want to take them through some other features, especially the merge feature. Okay. So, let's say we want to merge this particular data set with another data set. Suppose I want to look at the number of teachers. This was the data set on enrollment, right? Now, if I want to look at the data set for uh, number of teachers. So, we click here go to merge data set. It will give you a word of caution that how the merge happens and it will suggest you to go through the merging methodology. How NDAP merges two or more uh, data sets. You can go to the standardization document and click on proceed. Now, you see here to your left you will find an option to select the data sets. The first one is already selected, the one that you had, you were already working on, which was the enrollment in schools and higher education. Now you can click here to add a data set. Okay, let's click here to add a data set. You can again search through the list that is readily available because it gives you some of the recommended data sets or if the one that you're not looking for, if the one that you're looking for is not available here, you can type the, type the same in the search box. Now, I am looking at teachers. Is teachers available here? No. So, I will search for it here. Okay, let's go to total teachers for instance. So, these are the different data sets available that have data on teachers. What am I interested in? Am I interested in teacher related data? Am I interested in UDI's number of teachers by management, number of teachers by type of schools? I am interested in something by a different education level. So maybe let's go to okay, let's go to management academic qualification. Now you see there is another option of adding a data set. So NDAP allows you to merge maximum of three data sets at a time. 
if you want to merge more than three, you will first have to merge a maximum of three. When you have done that, then you can merge the, the henceforth uh, merge data set with the fourth or the fifth or the sixth one. Now, let us restrict ourselves to these two data sets for the time being. Now, you can do two types of merges here. One is the quick merge and the second is customized filters and indicators. When you do a quick merge, it will simply put together all the indicators in the two data sets. So, for example, if the first data set had say information on indicator 1, indicator 2, indicator 3 and the data set 2 had information on, I will just simply call it indicator 4, 5 and 6. So, when I click on quick merge, it will simply put all these three indicators together in one sheet. So, for all the territories, for all the geographies that you have selected or, the, or are available in the two data sets, you will have information for six indicators, indicator 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, right. But if you are interested in a handful or only a selected indicators of those two data sets, suppose my first data set had uh, say information or data points on 20 parameters and the second one had information on suppose 12 of them. Now I am interested in two from the first data set and maybe another three from the second data set. So I can customize the list of indicators from the two data sets and click on customize filters and indicators, choose the ones of interest and get the merge data set. And you can again uh, read the merge methodology here, okay. If you haven't read it before, you can read it here. Now in the interest of time, let's go to quick merge, merge in process and you get the merge data set here. Now you see there are two color codes that have been used here. One is blue and the other is pink. So they basically describe, they basically symbolize the two different data sets that you have used. The blue one is for the higher education enrollment data set and the pink one is for the teacher uh, by management and academic qualifications. If we also, if we had selected the third data set also, it would have given it a third different color just to differentiate between these two data sets. Now you see the profiles here, both of them are country level data sets. This is also country, this is also country. This is for 2010 to 15, this is for 2014 to 17. So that means there are intersections for two years, 14 and 15. This is yearly, the frequency is yearly and here also the frequency is yearly. And the last updated dates are mentioned which are not of any use here. Now you look at the merge data set summary. Now these are the dimensions of both the data sets and this is the data preview. So, since they were available for national, uh, available at national level, you will get a single row in the merge data set which will read India and it will give you the data points for all the indicators in the two data sets, right? Because uh, we had selected quick merge rather than customizing the list of indicators that we wanted, okay? So, this shows there are three indicators coming from the first data set and two indicators coming from the second data set. It's written three by three because all three indicators from the first one have chosen. It's written two by two because all the two indicators from the second data set have chosen, have been chosen, right? Now, like I said, the blue and the pink colors are denoted here and this is the dimension, uh, the metadata of the different parameters. These are the indicators that have been chosen, five of them, the minimum, maximum, their mean, median, their units, their weightage and other things, right. Now you can click on, either you can click here export to Excel or you can click here export merge data sets or you can simply share and save this as well. And if you want to edit this configuration, edit this merged data set, you can do the same here, edit merge configuration. Now when you click on exporting the merge data set, of course, I am assuming that you all have logged in uh, in your accounts. When you click on merge, the data set will be downloaded. You will again get a zip file. Now, once you get a zip file and if you open that zip file, you will have a couple of files there. One of them will be keys. What key, What does key mean? Key means that how do you or uh, it, it must be mentioned keys or uh, how to read the data set, how to. 
So that basically tells you how you can go through the merge data set. What's how, how to make sense of the merge data set basically. I will show it to you how it looks. So, for example, this was something called 7057 all files, it had a zip folder, 7057 keys, metadata, source data, end up report and readme. Readme document is the one that will tell you how to make sense of this merge data set. Metadata is something that I showed you on the website as well. Source data will be the, the two data sets that we had merged, right. One of them was on enrollment, the second one was on the teacher's qualification. So, it will have two data sets separately as well and end up report will be the uh, merged data set, alright. Any questions so far? Now, it so happened in this particular example that we took right now, we considered indicators from the same sector, both of them were from education. Now, if you want to merge data sets from education and health, suppose what is the, uh, if, if you want to look at some of the indicators like uh, national nutrition achievement survey and maybe something like uh, you know how was the I can I can give an interesting example like for example there is a lot of studies uh, which show the link between uh, the dropout of uh, female children from school and availability of an exclusive girls toilet in school right so that one is an infrastructure level uh, data and one is a, a Mm -hmm. is, is an enrollment is, is data. An so, you can take data. the two and, and run a uh, uh, Maybe run a correlation on the merge data set. So, it's, so you can merge the two sectors together, have one year and then you can do whatever analysis you want to want to do yourself. That is the best part. I think the merging part is the best part of this data set is that you can take two extremely different mm -hmm. sectors and you want to test, you want to test a hypothesis. Some hypothesis and find hypothesis. evidence. You can put them together, it will help you put it together and then you can run your correlation. No. Uh, any questions so far? <clears throat> okay. Let us go to e Gram Swaraj. e Gram Swaraj is Ministry of Panchayati Raj's website. Right? Uh, you want to take them to the Panchayati Raj structure? I am not sure how, no, how the, what are everybody the knows what the Panchayati Raj structure is here. The Panchayati Raj has not been implemented yeah. here. But almost an equivalent, you have got the ADCs mm -hmm. uh, Autonomous there, district and then there is nothing but an administrative body at the block level and then you have got the Darbar songs here at the lowest level as against that. Okay. But that is fine, there is an equivalent at least for the district level there is an equivalent data and for mm -hmm. the GP level there is equivalent an equivalent data. data. All right. So, it will give you uh, different data sets by uh, you know different themes. Are you interested in the profiles? Are you interested in accounting and finance data? Are you in interested in infrastructure data? Are you interested in the accountings or in the audit reports? So, it is got data on the 15th finance commission expenditures, it has data on uh, there is at the village level there is geotagging of assets taking place right now. What is the progress? Has, has all of that information. Okay. So, let us right. jump. But what you essentially yeah. have to do in a website like this is Come down. No, no, not, not so hmm. far down. Um, I was going to planning. Ah, planning. Go to go to planning. Yeah. Let's go to approve. Okay, so this is specifically on number of gram panchayats that have published their development plans. So this particular data set or this report will give you what is the total number of gram panchayats in that state and how many of them have published Gram Panchayat development plans for the year. So, if we want to look at Meghalaya, okay, so Meghalaya, none of them. It That's says they do not have that structure. No? They do not have that structure, right. But otherwise, you can simply download this simple data set as well. But, but it is better to go back to the website. Yeah. Come down. Come down. Was it in the? Come down. Come down. Yeah. No, no, no. Go to dashboard. Planning. Okay, planning. You can do planning. Or do asset. Do asset. Hmm. 
लिस्ट ऑफ एसेट पंचायत में राइट सो दिस इज द लेवल ऑफ ग्रेन्युलरिटी यू कैन गो टू यू कैन सिलेक्ट अ स्टेट I don't know. It might be zero here because it doesn't have that structure. We can we can select ADC. Ah, go to ADC. Fine. Let's go to galleries. Maybe. Let's do immovable immovable assets. Okay. Any specific asset category of interest here? Let's look at PDS shops, fair price shops. Where is it? No, no, no. Come down. Come down. It's right yeah, here. Yeah, got it. No, there's no subcategory. Any news? Next, generate report. Take time. Or it doesn't have. No, but then it would have said no data available. Try for Let's some other. Let's try something else. Go to another state. Go to go down no, or go to another state. Let's go to uh, no, not municipal corporation. Am I doing something wrong? No. Mm. No data available for the selected values. Wonderful. Then probably asset has not. Asset been list hasn't been revised. Anyway, the, the what we are trying to say uh, essentially is that. Uh, Lot of this data, even in this ministry, is available all the way down to the village level, right? And 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 you can generate this data. Whatever you should actually search, whatever is data available for Meghalaya, and download it and keep it. Let's see if activity-wise expenditure report is available. Yeah. But Meghalaya is not here. Oh, no. is it? It is. It is. No, it's yeah, not here. But there, it's there. all zero here again. Go go to Madhya Pradesh. So when you click here, or all these blue values are basically a link for you to go from macro to micro level data. So far, you are seeing states here, right? When you click here, you will be able to go to a sub-state level. Which is district? Which is yeah. Zilla Panchayat name is basically the district name, district panchayat, and you can see the total number of actions plan, action plans approved. You can approved click, click further on that. Then you can find further details. So, for example, in the Jhabua district panchayat, there were two gram panchayats available. Both of them were called Jhabua. No, there was there was one GP Jhabua, and there are there were two pl uh, plan types. One was the pl main plan, and there was a supplementary plan. And the total number of activities in the years is mentioned. How many of them were started, ongoing, completed, so forth, so so on and so forth. But the crux of the matter being that you can go from a higher granularity to a lower granularity and as low as a village village level, right? How many of you have used Udice data before? Show show it in the uh, don't go into the website yet. Just show it in the PPT. Okay. You know what Udice is, right? It's, you you system for education. Okay. It is the definitive database for education in India. It is run by the Ministry of uh, 
department of school education and literacy so that's how it looks like now you can click here on the dashboard and when you click on the dashboard you have uh, different data sets available by schools teachers and students so uh, these three will these three boxes or these three buckets will largely give you the uh, summary statistics so for example uh, number of schools in the urban areas and rural areas number of teachers uh, how many of them are male female if you want to go by number of students what's the gender uh, what's the gender distribution so on and so forth now if you go to the uh, static reports in the dashboard you will see a host of such reports available by these three different buckets if you click on either of these three buckets so for example if you click on student then all the reports available under the student bucket will appear if you click on teachers all the reports available for teachers their academic qualifications number of teachers teaching in different uh, types of schools number of teachers different uh, teaching to different uh, school grades and so on and so forth similarly if you want to go or if you want to look through the data sets available by school you can do that as well so for instance if you are interested in something like number of schools that have uh, infrastructure such as playground facility or maybe number of schools that have functional girls toilet or a functional boys toilet number of schools with libraries in rural areas something like this you can explore here right so uh, suppose we have clicked on say number of schools having rain water harvesting facility in their uh, premises now you can select the year of interest you can select the uh, state or the union territory and you can also select the districts later if you want to go down or drill down to a further sub district level or sub state level so in this case when i had selected tamil nadu i wanted to look at district wise data so i selected district wise here in some of the reports you will also have uh, option to select a particular or you know put a filter on the district so if you want to compare only five districts you can simply select those five districts from the drop down in this particular case in this particular report for rain water it did not allow me that option that is why i simply clicked on district wise otherwise i could have restricted myself to the state level data only right so when i clicked on district wise that's how the data appears so that means how, how do you make sense of this data now this shows that in this particular suppose erod district there were 973 primary schools now what does primary school mean schools that had uh, uh, classes from 1 to 5 had a rain water harvesting facility right similarly uh, 91 schools in chengalpattu district of tamil nadu 91 senior secondary schools in chengalpattu district of tamil nadu had a rain water harvesting facility right now udai is uh, really very simple and easy to navigate and it's also more user friendly as compared to other uh, data sources and that's a very personal opinion uh, simply because it has three main buckets that we talked about schools children and teachers and secondly it allows you to download data by uh, sorry in pdf format as well as in excel format so if you want to do some analysis you can go and download the data in excel if you want to attach the data set say as an annexure to a report that you are making you can simply uh, download the data in a pdf format and put it as an annexure you need not uh, you know do the ana analytics you can simply highlight the stuff that you want to highlight for the decision maker and put it as a part of the main report right the next up is a uh, sample registration system now how many of us here know what is sample registration system do we know what's srs so it's simply a large scale demographic survey and it gives you uh, uh, you know details on annual estimates of infant mortality rate uh, neo neo uh, natal uh, uh, deaths and births and so on and it's so administrative so. reporting it's not a survey yeah it's it's a report it's not a survey uh, the the cmos of every district they have to aggregate this aggregate information and, and report it, it here yes it's not a survey it's a report and it has data available at both national and sub national levels so that's a good thing here 
uh, if you want to navigate through your laptops, you can go on to censusindia.gov. See, because this year, because for the last three years we are behind, we have not done the census. Yeah. Census was last done in 2011, right? And because um, NFHS is done every fifth year, right? Four years interspersed in the middle. Then in the middle years, the SRS becomes the only source of important uh, data which the government recognizes and could whether it's health data or any other sectoral data, the SRS, especially the health health data. For health data, SRS becomes very essential because you have to Birds either, and deaths are you, all you have to either uh, wait for the next uh, NFHS Sensor, huh. but what happens in the in between four years. But NFHS won't give you, uh, you know, birth rates and death rates, no, right? No, you can. It asks whether there has been any, any births due to, yeah. uh, during the year between the two rounds. Okay, now the crux, the you know, the most interesting part for data people like us is the data and resource section of this website. When you click here, you will have visualizations if you want to look into the visualizations and something called a sample registration system if you want to go and download the data. Now, I found the visualizations here to be more interesting and I uh, wanted to, to take you through the literacy rate by age and state. Now, when you click on that, you have option to select the census year. Of course, if we had a census in 21, that would have been the latest year year. Otherwise, you had 2011, 2001 and 91 in the drop down. Settlement types allows you to select all or rural or urban. Population group is uh, the social categorization. Do you want to look at all? Do you want to look at SC, ST or OBC or general? Now, gender is of course uh, the male, female, it identifies these two only. The interesting part, just let me tell you how this interpret, the darker the color, the higher is the literacy. Darker the, the lighter the color, the lowest is the literacy. Now, forget about average rates. In most of cases in India, the younger generation are more literate than the older, older generation, generation, right? So therefore, the older you are, it becomes lighter and lighter. But Look at Kerala. Kerala is practically dark all throughout. So everybody in Kerala, irrespective of age, are highly literate, right? Similarly, in Goa, I think Goa should be a oh yeah. Goa is also like this, right? As against this, let us take Bihar. Bihar only up to here. Then after that, it becomes very light. That means literacy drops off very fast the, more, the older you go, you go to. So this is the type of really cool visualizations that SRS has. If you can go back to one slide, I just wanted to show you guys something. Go back. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so it's no one more. One more thing. Yeah. So look at it. It it has a lot of things, but like we talked about population projections. Remember, you were you were having this. It has population projection figures here also. You can look at that. Civil registration systems are all data on births and deaths. Right. If you want to know in the intervening period of, let's say, let's say 2023, 2023, there is no NFHS, there is certainly no census. But in 2023, 24, what is the <coughs> how many children were born and how many people have died? This is the only source that you're going to have, right? So that is why it's very important to uh, use the SRS uh, in the years where you don't have the big surveys. This becomes your only source of information. Okay. Now, coming back to these filters, I selected rural population SCs and females. Now, this is the kind of distribution you get here. You see, Lakshadweep was all blank. Similarly, Nagaland. No, Lakshadweep probably didn't have data. Data, maybe. But Nagaland was all blank as well. Data, data, data. You see, UP and uh, this one is. So, this Rajasthan. is rural, rural scheduled caste and, and females. females. So, Tripura is not bad, huh? Tripura is a very highly uh, educated uh, pop population group. And Meghalaya, if you look at Meghalaya, you see the less uh, literate population interspersed in different ages, right? Different age categories. You have use of blues with a mix of yellows. And if you look at urban population male, you see the picture is. So, can you see the difference between male and female education levels? You can see, no? Because the scale is still the same, 100% is absolute dark and 0% is more towards yellow. So the 
so even in the, among the scc population the rural sc sc population male and female you can just visually see the uh, now this is simply a snapshot of how you read this data visualization you can simply hover on these boxes these these are grids color grids right now when you hover over you will see so for example in this particular case i had selected maharashtra for 2011 this was all males in the urban maharashtra here and it says maharashtra 2011 the box that i had selected was for the age of 52 the box that i had hover hovered over in this particular picture all the population who were selected that means uh, SC, ST, OBC, general combined, everyone for urban settlement type for the males, 92.4 percent was the literacy rate. That means 92.4 percent of the urban males in Maharashtra of the age of 52 were literate. Just another word of caution between SRS, as I said, SRS because it's a registration system, right? Births and deaths. are going to be available for every year because every year it is reported through the cmo there for everything else they are going to be analyzing existing databases like for example this is 2011 census data they have simply visualized it they have simply given you an analytics for it right but health data in terms of uh, births and deaths and some other health parameters as well which is recorded every year is going to be available for every year it is not indexed to dependent on nfhs or dependent or on others, uh, on census or something like that so for health srs is very very important for all the inter health or demographic data or demographic data srs is very very important for all other data education or anything like for this case is ed education it is going to be essentially a graphical representation of data which is already available we just have two more sources and maybe then we'll break for lunch and i'll skim you through uh, these two as quickly as possible this is something very important that's why i wanted you to cover this before we break for lunch and that's called data.gov.in this is one of the most widely used data sources because it has data sets available again by all ministries or departments or sectors and it's one of the oldest data repositories available in india this is how it looks like if you want you can surf uh, on google the url is data.gov.in it's easily available and accessible now like in ndap and other sources the left panel helps you navigate and it gives you data sets by different sectors right you can also view all data sets because at times what happens most of the questions that are asked in uh, uh, in the parliament or in the uh, constituency meetings all those answers no if not all most of those answers are either sourced from this data or they are documented here so at times when when you are looking for maybe say uh, you know um, something something give me a peculiar example that could be asked as a question in the parliament um it something on uh, something like uh, uh, total expenditure on uh, on on climate change projects on climate change projects so this kind of information may not be available for all the districts or sub districts or for all the states for that matter but if it was asked bias from a particular mla or from a particular mp there is a possibility that that his answer might get documented here because he'll ask his fellows his you know his team to work on this particular data set get the data from the ground that will be answered in the next session of the parliament and that particular answer will get documented here you so when you click when you go to data.gov.in and you find uh, use these keywords no expenditure on climate in so and so district yeah. or in so and so block you might find just one search result and that search result will be nothing but the answer what that mp gave in the yeah parliament. so what what you have to do understand about this is that you have to be very sure what you are searching for it cannot be a blanket search it is not it, it is not show me everything on hospital no you it has to be pre precisely that you heard from somewhere and you want to try and see that whether this was discussed in parliament or not you have to know the string of words that you have to type in and you will find it here now now here for example i have used infrastructure projects 
under the Khelo India scheme for this uh, time period. You know the Khelo yeah. India scheme uh, for the Ministry of Culture, Youth and Sports. Youth and right? Sports. Very big thing uh, uh, that is going on, preparation for Olympics, preparation for Asian Games. Now Asian Games is coming up and so on and so forth. Now so, when you click on the data set, this is how the uh, catalog appears. Since there was just one data set available, it gave me just one search result. And this was this. Now you can again either download the data. Now this gives you an option to download only in CSV file format. But it's very uh, you know user friendly when it comes to softwares like Excel. So you can you download the data from here and uh, or maybe ex choose to export in a different file format if you want. And this gives you simple uh, you know information or profile of the file. So for example what's the file size, how many downloads, what's the granularity. This is something really important. Not all the data sources mention the granularity. So far, we have just seen two of them. One was NDAP, and the second is this, right? Uh, the reference URL that means the host, uh, uh, you know, website or the host data source is mentioned here, and you can simply export the data and do your own analytics. The next up is India Urban Observatory. You want to take up this one? Well, we can do this after long. It's, it's just a couple of slides. I think you can take them too quickly. Okay. So change? Yeah. Yeah. So the Indian Urban Observatory. Yeah, we'll just wrap. We are wrapping another couple. Of okay. okay. Oh, we can continue. Okay, that's all right. Okay. okay. Anybody needs a bio break? That's also fine. Um, uh, so India uh, uh, Urban Observatory is. Uh, Located in uh, uh, within the Ministry of uh, Housing, Housing and Urban, and Urban Affairs, Affairs, that is in a place called Nirman Bhavan uh, in, Delhi. Uh, in in Delhi. Uh, it is one of the coolest places I've been to in my life. It is really a really cool place. Let me tell you, when India within India a ministry has a place like this, I don't know if I can no, show you. It doesn't look like this. <laughs> I don't know whether I can show you. I, I'll probably try and get. Uh, I don't know whether I can show you certain pictures, but you know, you know those really cool places where you've got huge uh, television screens uh, one after the other, and all of them together form one screen, right? So, and and it's got uh, uh, it's it's got um, room separators where you click on something and a room becomes two rooms or three rooms with its own infrastructure and stuff like. It's really cool. It's really cool, and it's manned by Deloitte people and PwC people, and we had the opportunity to sit here and do some work on that. That it has been created to house all research done on urban in India. Remember, we talked about Amplify, the Amplify beta version. They are creating it. Plus, all all uh, data which also includes India, whether it's at a global scale or a national scale or a state scale or a city scale. This is the single archive. If there is any study done on Shillong, it will be archived here, right? So, if you want to do a study in Shillong and you know such a study has been done somewhere else, you can go to this archive and download it and design your own uh, RFP. So, go. so, it's got really, uh, suppose suppose you go here, go, go to a state level uh, this thing, provides interactive exhibits and you go and click on this one, uh, you are live on this, is it? Yeah. Yeah, you can look at unsafe places for women in India. And it's also one of the very few websites which uses uh, geospatial, uh, ge geospatial data. data. It's In fact, none of the other websites we have discussed has geospatial data. This has. It's loading slow, so let me take you through the slides. Let's do the mosquito hotspots. Yeah. In Dehradun city, there was a st study done on Dehradun city in Uttarakhand. On, on identifying mosquito hotspots in there, they did a, did a study. See how peculiar topic this is. I mean, I don't think I can find any data set on mosquito hotspots. That is hotspot. that is why if any other city wants to do a project like this, they can they come can here come and come learn here, from this. Learn from this and create their own model. Yeah, that's cool. So geospatial mapping on hotspots, mapping and everything. Everything it's been created to do. Everything that they do has geospatial mapping to it. They use. Uh, 
I think they use Arc Info for doing most they of their work. They use ArcGIS. Uh, ArcGIS uh, for their uh, for their data. So yeah, this is also another website. I don't know whether they have anything on uh, Meghalaya or not. But my point is, if you want to do a study in Meghalaya uh, urban areas and you want to look at certain reference points, whether has any other study like this been done in India? This is the single source that you have to go to. You can go here and find out whether similar studies have been done. Learn from it and frame your terms of reference on that basis. Okay. So this was the that women safety uh, data set that we were looking at earlier. Okay, none, no kinds were reported. No kinds. Yeah. You guys have to start putting in more data into websites. <laughs> This is a free, uh, this is supposed to be a free resource, so you should. You see, it's all grey, no data set available. If you look at something like Jharkhand. I mean, even a so called uh, poor state like Jharkhand also has data, and so much of data. So it's a district wise ranking on safety of women. So they must be using NCRB data. Yes, sources mentioned NCRB. National Crime Data yeah, NCRB, Bureau. yeah. So this particular district had 900, 674 districts. Okay, so the idea of showing this urban observatory is that if ever you guys um, have are given the task of framing some study for urban areas in Meghalaya on a topic which you are not very familiar with, you can actually go to this website and find references on, on whether such a study has been attempted in India before and then download it and then learn from it and create a, your own terms of reference. 